Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Let's pray, Father, we bless you today. Your word is sweet in our hearts and we enjoy fellowshipping with you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because today you will guide us into all truth, just like Jesus said, and we believe in him. Thank you for the burdens that are being lifted right now. And yokes that are being destroyed in the lives of those that are watching and listening to this broadcast. We bless you, Father. At the end of it, joy is being restored to every heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So we're looking at God's financial system. So we see Jesus speaking here in Matthew chapter 6. And, and yesterday I stopped at verse 25. Jesus, let me read that last part of verse 24 again. It says, you cannot serve God and mammon. So God has a financial system. And it is another financial system of the world which is controlled by mammon. Mammon is the symbol of the world's financial system. Notice Jesus didn't say you cannot serve God and money. He says you cannot serve God and mammon. So... The God of the financial system is called Mammon. And God is God. Now, isn't it amazing that Jesus equated the serving of Mammon to God? Now, what does this tell you? Mammon can separate you from God. If you yield to Mammon, you will be separated from God. It's as simple as that. So, Jesus made this powerful statement. I said, you cannot serve God and mammon. Then in verse 25, he says, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. So I told you yesterday, number one step in removing yourself from the service of mammon is what? Don't worry about your life. Now, King James says, take no, Old King James, take no thought. <laughs> you know what that means? All right, then he says, <laughs> Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Isn't it amazing that everything we struggle or people struggle in life for is these three things what to eat what to drink what to cover themselves with this is why wherever you go to in the world food business and clothing line business shall not cease <laughs> praise god and that's the truth you never have a time when People selling food say, well, it's like people are not eating again. No. People eat every day. Every second someone is eating something, somewhere. People must wear clothes. Now, this is broader than just eating food. See, for example, he's talking about oh, your body, what will you put on? He's talking about your shelter also, your covering, your house. Where am I going to lay my head? You're looking at what you're going to cover your body with. If not, you can just sleep under the tree and be fine. Now, Jesus is saying, don't worry about these things. Why shouldn't we worry about these things? These are the cardinal things of life. These are the things that people pursue. These are the things that if you don't have, you'll be considered poor and broke. If you cannot eat food when you're supposed to eat food, you are broke. If you cannot pay for shelter, if you cannot, if you cannot pay for a decent place of living, you are broke. You're considered broke. At any level, any part of the world. Now, decent, what we call decent might be relative. But at any level you find yourself, Whatever is called decent, if you cannot afford it, then you are broke. Well, here's Jesus telling us, don't worry about those things. Why? 
You know, you read something like, you don't just say, hmm, blessed be his word. No, Jesus is telling you something that you should not do. It is important you ask him, Lord, if you don't want me to do this, <laughs> then what's the plan? Because that's why I'm sharing these things with you, because there is a plan, praise God. Now look at this. Hmm. Verse 26. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into bands, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. I want this thing to sink in your heart. Jesus said, you don't worry. And then he says, look at the birds. They don't plant. They don't reap. They don't store up in bands. But guess what? Have you ever seen a bird that is starved? <laughs> Have you ever seen a bird just fly to your house and you look at the bird, it has, has kwashoko, you know, and, and just, you know, and like, oh, wow. You now put the bird in one spot and began to begin to feed the bird and then it starts gaining weight and, and stuff like that. You, you don't see such things. Why? Jesus says, your heavenly father feeds them. Now that's something to think deeply about. I know we've read the scripture many times, but you just browse through it. But now I'm telling you, sit down and think about this deeply. Now Jesus now said something. Are you not more of more value than they? What's he communicating here? If God can take care of the birds, and I'm of much more value than the birds, what is God going to do for me? He never allowed the bird go hungry. Think about it. You, you think, now, now in your mind, you're thinking that eh, eh, the bird will fly now. People throw food away and all that. So uh, they'll always find something to eat. So should we start roaming this shit? But you see, what you don't realize is this. The day you put that food outside and then the birds came to eat it, you are thinking you are just pouring waste food. You don't realize that you were moved to pour that food for the birds to eat. I told you there's a system with God. There's a financial system with God. Praise God. So Jesus said, look. It's not something strange I'm telling you to do. Look at the birds. God is already doing it. Oh, mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. <laughs> Look at verse 28. It says, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothed the grass of the field. Have you ever wondered a field that no one has ever, you know, it, it's amazing. You look at this field. Nobody feeds them. Nobody, nobody takes care of the field. But it's ever green. You, you are traveling by road. And then you get to this area. You, you know no, there is no village near this place. It's not a farmland. This is just an expanse of land. And then you are, you, everything there looks green. And, and then meanwhile, the one that is near your house, where people live, you, you're complaining. You guys, why don't you water these flowers? Why don't you water these guys? They are dying. Hey, the ones out there are not dying. The ones close to people are the ones dying. What does that tell you? It is man that is failing. The ones that are under the direct care of God, they don't fail because God doesn't fail. So how does God sustain them? That's what you should begin to think. Listen, this message is to spur you up, is to spur you to action, to provoke your minds to begin to think. All right then, so it says, <laughs> Now if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? 
Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall I eat? Or what shall I drink? Or what shall I wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. <laughs> Think about it. He's not telling you you don't need them. Get it right. See, someone reads this scripture and says, mm, we don't need all these things. So when we get to heaven, we will wear robes that God sold for us. You know, I put a talk like that. Say, Jesus said, Jesus said it. Jesus said it here. He said, therefore, do not worry saying, what shall I eat? Or what shall I drink? Or what shall I wear? For after these things, the Gentiles seek. See, it is the Gentiles that seek them. Me, I don't want all those things though. So you find people, they can't wear good clothes. Because they think in their mind. See, now that's because someone misrepresented the gospel of Jesus to them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray your understanding is enlightened as I share these things. Watch, he said. <laughs> For your heavenly Father knows that you need, not want now, that you need, not some, but all these things that the Gentiles seek. Your Father knows you need them. Oh, so I need them? Yes. I need a good car? Yes. Uh, the world is the world people that say they, they need good cars. Ah, 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 ah. It's a human need. It's a human need. You need a good house? Yes. It's a human need. And it's not devilish to need a good house. It's not devilish to need good clothes. It's not devilish to need good food. It's not devilish. It's not. But Jesus is saying something striking here. The Gentiles go for those things. So they seek them. <laughs> oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And he's telling us, you don't seek them. Don't worry. Saying, how am I going to get a good car? How am I going to get, how am I going to change this, my car? This car has been giving me trouble. I need to change it. Oh, ah, I need to work day and night jobs. I need to do this. What, what are you doing when you are doing? You are thinking thoughts, saying, how will I change this, my new car? Mm, okay, I know what to do. I'm going to take up a second job, see, because now my, my credit rate is low. So by the time I take up a second job, I'll earn more money, then I'll raise up my credit rating, and then I can go for uh, this car and, and be paying this amount of money. You know what you're doing? You are taking thought. And that's exactly what Jesus says. Don't. The desire to have a good car is right. Nothing is wrong with it. But what do you do with that desire that is what makes the difference. Watch this now. Jesus now says in verse 33, it says, but seek first. <laughs> he didn't just say, but seek the kingdom of heaven. He says, but seek first. Number one. It must be priority. It's a mark of honor that your life, what are you going to start out with? He says, seek first. Now, we're still in the month of January. This is the last week of the month of January. But what have you done first this month? What have you done in this first month? Have you sought first the mind of God? Let's see. Now he says, <laughs> but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all, not some, all these things shall be added to you. What things? What to eat, what to drink, what to wear, all those things that the Gentiles seek. He says, you turn your attention from them and seek God's kingdom. Mm. 
Our time is all. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. This is getting interesting. Praise God. All right, then. See you tomorrow. The Lord bless you. Bye-bye.